Okay, welcome back to the studio. Uh, you may notice everything's a little cleaner than it normally is. Um, this is because I'm actually, I've got an open studio this weekend. It's partly the reason actually these have come into fruition because I wanted to create something uh, for the open studios. Um, so yes, you can see my bench has been painted and the walls are very bright and white, very clinical, it's not normally like this, but actually it's quite a uh, nice way to show these final objects um, because they're pretty much done. The last thing really is to install them. But um, before I do that, I just want to talk th through the final uh, finishing processes because it's actually quite involved, but there was sort of no point really kind of just talking through each one because it's lots of small bits. So um, I think the first thing you'll probably notice is that these are all lovely and dark and have been blackened. The process of doing that is quite an interesting one because um, the first thing is to uh, get a solution of iron uh, and vinegar. And I um, can't tell you what that makes, but I'm sure I can find out. Um, and when you apply that to the oak, uh, it forces a reaction with the tannins within the oak and creates a really lovely dark, deep um, colour. Uh, and so I apply that liberally to all of the wood. Um, and using a cloth or then also using a brush and then to get into sort of the real niggly bits, uh, use a toothbrush, which is perfect. Um, and from there, I can then um, finish with some black wax. And I love using this special effects wax because um, it gives a really lovely, lovely dark, deep color. Um, and also it protects and finishes the wood and it doesn't sort of mask the wood. Um, rather it enhances it. So rather than paint, which creates sort of a layer over the top, this still has sort of a level of translucency, which really um, brings out the oak and gives it this sort of almost dark, charred um, feeling that it could have been come from a peat bog or something. Um, and again, to apply this, it's the same process using, a, using either a, a shoe brush. Uh, and then uh, I often add something else to it. So either a bit of white spirit to really thin it down just to give everything a, a, a total coat. Um, and then also I might add something else like tea coil, just again, to uh, make it go further, make it really fill in all the cracks. And to help with that, also use a toothbrush because that can really get into um, the places that the larger brush can't get to. Um, the other thing that I've done is on this one, I have drilled a couple of holes uh, to take a couple of screws so that the vertical sundial can be bolted on top of it. I did a couple of temporary ones, um, but that's now been fixed properly. And so when uh, the brass bolt goes on top, the whole thing um, is held in place nice and firmly. Um, and then you'll also notice uh, that this horizontal sundial has grown a bit. So I've added more washers and more brass bolts uh, to these sort of um, arrays here. And Again, I really like uh, this embellishment because on the one hand, it almost looks like it could be purposeful. They sort of remind me something of like um, a sort of a, a Tesla machine or even something geological, uh, like some kind of stalactite or something. And again, it fits with the work where uh, they don't really have a function because lots of this does. It feels like they might be um, alluding to something else. So it's both decorative and aesthetic, but also alludes to um, a, a further purpose. And so then um, the next problem that I had was trying to make sure that this gnomon was uh, fixed nice and tight. And initially I thought I might use glue, um, but I don't really like using that because there's something about it that feels like it's not quite um, honest to the metal. And when I've done it before, actually, a lot, a lot of the time it fails eventually, particularly as this is going outside. Um, so I came up with this, uh, this solution of using really thin pieces of brass just to wedge into the gaps um, where I'd slightly overfiled. And I think it's been really successful because it's got more movement, but also it's um, totally functional. And um, when compared to sort of the, the, the precise nature of the laser cutting, I think it's a really nice um, offset and difference. And so that to me has, has worked really nicely. And then obviously I've just uh, further um, fix the bolts that go into the concrete. And once again, um, with this concrete post, um, I have used black wax. Um, 
And I was thinking of trying to fill in these holes and neaten everything up. But once again, I, I just wanted to leave it. I think there's an honesty to it. And because so much of it is so precise, I think um, allowing, allowing some of the, the material to have a bit of breathing room um, is to the sculpture's benefit. Um, which then brings me on to our uh, <coughs> vertical sundial. Um, so I tried painting elements of this. And I went through the process of masking it all up, um, adding the paint, um, being really careful just to get nice neat lines, which actually was quite hard still. Um, and then um, I started adding some more bits to the dial here and I kind of just wasn't feeling it. So I left it for a bit um, and then I just decided to take it all off because I think there's something so much nicer about the honesty of the brass and the stainless together that looks so much better. Um, and what's happened then is this back, I think, has become really, really um, interesting because once again, I had the issue of getting the gnomon working tightly. Um, and so I had these two brass pins uh, planned that would slot through the back. However, they were slightly too small in diameter to fit the hole, so it was still wobbling. So once again, this um, notion of using thin pieces of brass came into play and again I think it's worked really well because it adds something that's kind of elaborate to it but again it's really functional and so pulling that out further I've added in these brass um, washers here and brass bolts just uh, to pin the pin in more tightly and as a result the whole thing's really nice and firm um, and uh, I think it's going to look great so um, that then needs to go uh, onto the two posts but I won't do that until it's outside because so much of this relies on everything being very horizontal and into the right measurements. So it feels that it's probably best to do that all in situ. Um, and so from there, we're basically done in the studio. The next thing then is to take them outside, uh, make the bases. Speaking of which, uh, the vertical sundials base, um, that's just been finished ever so slightly. Um, it's been painted black, but before I did that, I just had to sand um, down and fill all the sort of rough edges that I've done with my very bad welding. So um, that's a two part uh, metal filler uh, that then I apply, I sand down, and then with the paintbrush, I've painted up all of the uh, metal work. Um, given that another sand down and then I've rolled and finished it so that it's a nice smooth finish. And I'll probably want to give it one more coat when outside as well, just to make sure it's super weatherproof. Um, but from there, we just need to go outside. So um, I will be very careful, take these out, um, and then we can install the final works. <laughs> 